So we're heading over to Kato's house. He's an artist based in North Hollywood. And he's a really talented artist. He's a fashion designer. He's a music producer and a DJ. And, you know, he's just like Nigo doing um, clothing, music, first going into music, producing, DJing, and then now fashion. So yeah, this one, this is our fourth artist collection with Kato. And this one really means a lot to me, especially because he is Japanese American as well. And he's also chasing his dream, you know, in the, in the creative field. So yeah, I'm excited for you guys to meet him and, you know, go a little behind the scenes of like who he is and, and what he does. So these are all your pieces? Man, it's been cooking up nonstop 24-7. Fire. Shit's crazy. All right. This one, though. The French, French Terry? French Terry polyester? This is a 14-ounce heavyweight 450 GSM. Ooh. And then with the denim? Yeah, this one's real special. I feel like this one specifically because my very first piece ever was hand-stitched on a college crew neck. Just said college. Yeah. That classic crew neck. So I chose the Varsity. Oh, I love this. How's it hanging off? Raw edge, yep. just because we live life on the edge and we're raw. All right, tell me about it. But this piece specifically is sort of the one that like represents like the beginning of everything. Yeah. The beginning of everything that we're standing in the middle of, this piece. Love it. Love and then it. no matter how distressed this gets, the message always remains clear to undo. Right. So that's sort of the emphasis behind like the raw edge and like the distress nature of like the lettering. Starts perfect, you know? Yeah. And then as life beats you up, still visible, tattered, but tells, visible. Tells your journey. Yeah, exactly. Right? Everybody's gonna be a little bit different. All right, so when I first met you, mm -hmm. shout out Sue, I was super impressed with like all your pieces Thank and like from everything to like how you sew your pieces, mm -hmm. right? And like the deep meaning behind it. And I really connected to that because that's something that I emphasize in, in my brand too, right? Of Songo is making sure that there's a reason for it, that there's mm -hmm. a message I'm trying to convey. An answer to why. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the meaning behind Command Z, there's a deeper meaning to it. Oh yeah. So how did you start Command Z and what does it mean to you? Command Z started honestly when I quit my day job and just decided to say fuck it and figure it out because I knew that I moved to LA for something greater, you know, like I didn't move here to work a bullshit job, make very little money and be struggling check to check. Like that's not the way. Um, but doing that on your own account, trying to figure out your own dreams, that is the way. So, you know, I spent the time like that, like broke and fucking trying to figure out my shit for a second. Yep. But I really just ordered a sewing kit on Amazon off the strength of some, I'm gonna try something new, you know? Uh, thrifted some pieces with my boy Marcus, okay. and we both made the very first piece ever, which is a sweater with a Levi's pocket. And then I put another Levi's pocket right here. Sick. So it all started out of thrifting. Like um, the butt pocket. Yeah. Nice. Took the butt pockets off, and then I repurposed them, put the little one, the big one, and then the other big one right here, all hand stitched. So. Definitely a nod to where the brand would end up, but it was just the way that I could see myself, like how, how could I make this happen right now? And I literally just went at it every single day after that. I sewed every single day after that. I kept making pieces, hand sewing them at first, progressively upgraded the machine. Messing up your fingers. Messing up my fingers, <laughs> like all the shit. Um, and honestly, Command Z stands for undo, and it represents my pivot from music to fashion. Fashion I'd been into as a consumer for 20 plus years leading up to that point, but never as a creator. So pivoting from music, I just said, fuck it. And after I'd gotten into sewing like that, I was like, this, this might be the thing. So uh, yeah, undo, command Z represents, you know, just taking a step back, reassessing, you know, changing your surrounding if necessary. And this life, and knowing that this life, there is not one way to live it. This life is, 
there's a million and one different ways to live it and it's unique to each of our experiences. So to undo the idea, to unlearn the idea that there's only one way to live, that you gotta grow up, go to school, get a job, get married, raise a family, get a house. That's the only way to live. That's not true, you know? So that's sort of what my brand represents is to undo whatever you've been told and relearn it for yourself, which is what, I be, what I'm doing with the clothing. I'm taking it apart from how it's known and repurposing it into something never before seen, into something brand new. We're alchemizing. So what do you use like for inspiration? What's your inspiration? Like how do you think of things like this? My inspiration is truly yeah. my life, my life story. I feel like I'm learning day by day how to translate my life story uh, into clothing. And, you know, I am looking at other brands. I am seeing what's popular, but not copying. If anything, if I see an idea, I'll take the very small part of the idea that I like and I'll run with it my way. Right. So, you know, it's really just going off of my life experience, uh, things that have happened to me, beliefs or morals that I hold true to myself, just translating that into clothing and coming up with new ways every day to, to do so. Even in just saying I love my mom. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, my mom loves Even tough so guys love mom. <laughs> That's right. Oh, just wait till it's Christmas, bro. <laughs> These go crazy. Yeah, we drop in all red mom hats. So, yeah, it's kind of just uh, really pulling from in within. Yeah. Trying not to look so, f so much outside on a validation tip of what would people think is cool, but what would I think is cool? Yeah. You know, like, what do I, what have I always, what do I think is cool? Like, what do I love? Like, what, what what's important to me? and creating those things through clothing and you know expressing those ideas and even being silly you know not taking myself too seriously right I mean, don't bother me i'm on vacation it's a representation of when i'm at coachella don't text yep. me don't call me about work this is we, a summer camp we we have summer <laughs> camp yeah don't bother me I'm, and, and also just a representation of like your grandpa's goofy hat or some shit you know right right so pulling from imaginary inspo points like that as well that i just sort of have a visual for for some reason So we, we both went to school for like the majority of our life, yeah. right? the years and years. There's a few classes that were beneficial to me um, with what I'm doing now, yeah. right? But I'd say like the majority of them, they, they didn't help me that much, but like they do teach you good values. Yeah. Would you say that education and like societal norms played a big role in, in what you're doing now? I mean, everything is everything, right? Yeah. So maybe not directly so, but maybe values that I learned during that time or things that I learned I didn't like because of these classes help point the way. Um, but I would say a lot of what I learned, I learned from doing. I learned from just going out there and trying. Um, I think that a lot of it just comes from curiosity, drive, those two things alone, honestly. Curiosity and drive can propel you to great heights um, without an, a proper education. I think a proper education is valuable, of course. Um, I think that all the, the classes, like I said, maybe show us what we do and don't want to do or get us closer to that point. But I think in general, if I could go back in time and do one thing different, it would be say, fuck college <laughs> and just get straight to the art, get to creating, like focus and really put in the time, put in the hours that are necessary for this shit. Cause up until I was doing this full time, it was just a hobby. It was my, what I do in my spare time type activities. So I think that, yeah, it definitely, whatever I had done before, whatever I'd learned before definitely helped point me in the right direction to music and then furthermore clothing and now music and clothing. Yeah. But yeah, when I talk to people about school and education and they're stressing about college, mm -hmm. right? I'm like, you don't even need to stress about it. Like they'll stress about going to like a private college. A prestigious place. Yeah. Something that'll so give them much, street cred. Right, and it's so much money. Honestly, when I think about it, I don't even know if my diploma even was used through the jobs that I've had, mm -hmm. right? But I really like what you're saying, just go and do, mm -hmm. you know? And that's the one thing that was most important to me too with Sango. Yeah. Is that just because like, I, I, I had an idea of something that I really liked and wanted to do. And I just I was like, I'm just gonna do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really have a background at all in fashion or yeah. how to start a clothing brand, but you don't need it. I'll figure it out. Yeah. And I've learned so much, right? As you have too, starting a brand. Yes. So it's it's amazing that 
when you just go and do it and you just go put your heart into it, what we're talking about is mm -hmm. that you'll benefit so much from it. Mm -hmm. Either you like it or you don't, mm -hmm. right? But at least you learn something by actually digging in right, yeah. from your passion. Every single time you'll learn something. You know, there's there's always a lesson to be learned. At some point in this journey, we stop taking L's as losses and L's become lessons. There's no such thing as a loss anymore in this existence. All we're doing is learning. Undo university. Always a student of the teacher of life. Man, it was perfect that I wore this shirt. But yeah, we're always learning, constantly learning. Always, always showing up to work, always ready to learn. And in exchange, receiving the blessings that are meant for us, you know? So yeah, this is my dad's piece. He did this when he was like an artist back in the day. That shit's crazy. Yeah, like huge inspo. When I was a kid, my mom would always be like, your dad did this. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, I didn't care. I was like, I want to just get Yu-Gi-Oh cards yeah. <laughs> or Pokemon cards. But now, you know, as I come to it, it's, um, it's definitely really inspirational and I appreciate it a lot more. Especially having become an artist yourself, you know? Yeah. Like to see that, you know, it does run in the family type shit and like right. that there's so much history involved in our, our culture and our lineage. Straight up. Shit's like, crazy. And I've always wanted to be creative and I, I think because of my dad. But yeah, he's he dropped out of UCLA after his first year. He went to go follow a mentor of his in Japan to go learn Japanese ceramics. Then came back here, started up like one or two studios in like Venice and then sold like other Japanese artists ceramics and his, his as well. And I was like, I love that. And that inspired me. Resulted in a wall in LA's epicenter of Japan. Yeah, this is it. Fuck yeah, this it's shit's inspired. fire. Forever inspo for everybody. Everybody that passes this shit is an inspiration. Straight up. So we're both Japanese American, right? Facts. We're chasing something in the creative field. Big facts. And right off the bat, like when I met you on the first day, mm -hmm. I related to you on so many different levels, right? Like Most mindset, definitely. values, philosophically, oh, conceptually, yeah. right? Even off the tip of meditating. Tip of meditating, exactly. Spiritually. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, you have a very interesting background. Definitely. You're, absolutely. You're birthed by two biological parents from Japan, mm -hmm. and then you're adopted by two Japanese American parents in Cupertino, San Francisco Bay Area. Correct. Right? So how do you think that background and that aspect played a role and influenced you? I think that growing up in America and being born in Japan, I feel a genetic hardwiring of certain Japanese qualities and values. Like when I went to Japan, you know, like meticulous nature to detail, my addiction to routine, uh, how, yep. how clean I think everything must be, et cetera, et cetera. I feel those things in my, in my work, and my lifestyle. Uh, but growing up here, obviously got into things like skateboarding and you know, more West Coast, kind of like California boy lifestyle shit. So I think that those meeting points are super present in my work. I think that unspokenly so, and like more now I'm able to explain like my lineage and my heritage like through my work. Uh, just visually, even this hat, a very American vessel by way of Japanese patchwork and stitching. Beautiful. It's yeah. sh sh like shit like that. I love that. Yeah. So you know that question that we'll get like, oh, what are you? Or where are you from? Yeah. Right? And I always respond, I'm like, oh, I'm from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And they'll come back and they'll be like, no, 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 where are you from from? Right? And I, I know where the, we know where they're getting at. And I always just mess with them and tease with them. I'm like, oh, I'm from Pasadena. Yeah. Right? And they're like, all right, what's your ethnicity? And then so I'll tell them I'm Japanese. But I also feel kind of weird when I say that because of like the cultural expectations yeah. sometimes, right? Like for example, my parents, they, they speak maybe a few sentences of Japanese at most. My grandparents, they spoke Japanese, but more fluent in, in English, mm -hmm. right? But it's also because a lot of our culture was suppressed, right? Like post World War II. Yeah, absolutely. That's all like grandparents shit. Yeah, and like how we had to learn that from our parents or grandparents or our own research because it's not what they teach you in our history books. It's a very quickly skipped over very element quickly. of American anything, history. Right? Yeah. And then you know the reparations they got. Yeah. And then you know when they came back, the Japanese Americans from the internment camps, the majority of them didn't even get their properties back. They right? got very little of what they got taken. Right. Do you feel that there are certain qualities ingrained in us from being Japanese? 100%. I feel that, you know, whether we're born there, here, whatever generation we are, there are certain things about us, you know, like I just spoke about earlier, like our work ethic and our drive, our attention to detail, uh, 
addiction to routine. Again, those things are, when I went to Japan, things that I noticed in the culture, I seen it in the people, uh, that I felt the most connected by way of those things. Yeah. So I think that, you know, like I said, regardless of whatever generation or wherever we were born, if you are a Japanese American, like that is, that's what it is, you are, you have those qualities. While it is more extreme overseas or to a first or second generation Japanese person, right. um, it's ever present no matter how far down the line you go. Like it's so deep in our blood. Genetically hardwired yeah. into us. It's something that even if we wanted to shake, I think it's harder to do than we think it is. Yeah, and we're so blessed, especially like it's so useful in what we're doing. Yeah, oh, you know? it's the most useful tool in this shit because it's the ability to keep going. It's right. the thing that gives us that extra push. It gives, us, it gives our work that extra push, that advantage that some people don't think is important. The little details making the biggest difference. And it's some shit that, you know, like some people would be like, Nah, it's not, we don't need to do that. It's extra time, it's a waste of time. Right. But to pay attention to those little details, people notice those things specifically. So yeah, I think that being Japanese American and having these qualities ingrained in us is really what helps propel us one step further in our work ahead of the competition, yeah. whoever, whatever that is. And that's actually when I met you, because I don't know that many Japanese, I think you're really the only Japanese American that I know that's pursuing like a creative passion. Yeah. And you know, it's it solidified it. We have so much in common, especially these certain qualities of detail. Yeah. The message, like how we pay attention to our messaging. Mm -hmm. You know, everything has a reason, everything has a purpose, everything has a story, yep. right? And we make sure that we emphasize that in our branding and our clothing and our designs. Yeah, as one of the most important aspects of it. Even though that we don't speak a word of Japanese, mm -mm. right? We barely really know a lot of the culture of J Japan. You know what I mean? Like I eat the food, right? but like how those certain values and traits that we've been ingrained in us from when we were kids um, and from our ancestors and everything, and that was passed down. I think about it every day. I'm grateful for these, these qualities because like, uh, you know, it's, it's what gives us that, that creative edge. It's that thing that like really separates our work from the rest because we pay attention to these things, because these qualities not only are part of us, but a part of our work, just as much as our brands are an extension of our personality. So. Yeah, I think that it's fucking amazing. I'm truly every day grateful. I, I thank the universe daily for, you know, blessing me with these qualities and this, whatever, whatever yeah. it is, I thank the universe daily for it. There's a lot of things to love about like what we're doing, right? Yeah. One of the things that I really love is being able to incorporate, you know, our, our interests, our values, philosophies, mm -hmm. and be able to put it put it out there creatively. Yep. And be able to connect with others and build build this community. And I really do believe in like how your values and interest, your deep passions from your young adulthood, right, and childhood, that it it does correlate to like your purpose in life. Yeah. Whatever it ends up being. For example, you know, I loved basketball and you love skateboarding. Yep. It's all we did, it's all we cared about. There's mm -hmm. nothing else. That was the answer to why, every yeah. day. Why are you getting up? Right. Play basketball, go yeah. skateboarding. So how do you think skateboarding played a big role in who you are today? I think skateboarding, everything from the shoelace belt to the choice of pants that I wear like every day, uh, to down to the vessels that I like to use specifically for Command Z. Um, I think it all just ties back to my love for skateboarding. Uh, the t-shirts that I use just feel like the 90s and 2000s skate tees that I used to wear. So everything really just tying back to that feeling of like, you know, 16 year old me. It's doing things for that version of ourselves and that's creating our greatest work. How much it's taught us, Yeah. you know, from skateboarding and like the fact that we commit and it's all we cared about. There's nothing else. Yep. Like tunnel vision to just skateboarding and just to basketball and like, that's all I'm gonna do. And then like, what it teaches you too, is that when you're practicing and you're trying to you know, learn a new move yep. or you're trying to you know, learn a cross or whatever, you, you can't just do it for like a day, two days. Like you gotta keep going at it. Practice so something daily. It. Practice something daily. That's valid. It's right. literally, you go at it every day, you will see results no matter what. You put in honest work, your intention is right and you really wanna grow, you really wanna build, you wanna fucking play in the NBA, you wanna be a pro skater, whatever, then you know, like that, sh it will happen. 
Um, and you know, even beyond just what skateboarding taught me trick-wise, taught me a lot about community, camaraderie, taught me to commit, you know, don't be scared, just leap, you know, and when you win, the, the gratification of finally getting a trick or, you know, winning a game, whatever, like the, that gratification that doesn't come from anything but putting in the work, the hours, the time, that's, yeah. that's what we do, it for. that's why. Right. It's still why. It's yeah. just kind of evolved to fit our adult profiles. Right. And like the culture it brings to. Yeah. Right? Like how huge the skateboarding culture is, how big the basketball culture is, and also how they both tie into fashion. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a whole subculture of skateboarding individuals that could be roped together by way of a shoelace belt. It all started with a string. Right. The rest was history. So one of my biggest challenges with Sango is social media. Mm. Right? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. It, it's a beast on its own. Yeah. Like if I could hire someone, like we're talking about this, it would be for social media. It's the first job I'm offering. Yeah. Social media. Yeah, it's like so much you have to, that goes into it. It's, you have to have the content. Yeah. You have to plan, right? The content calendar. Yeah. Um, you have to strategize based on the algorithm. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot, right? But yeah. I do love social media because you're able to connect with a lot of people out there, have deep conversations with people you've never even met and build a community. It's our right? greatest tool and our greatest enemy. It is, exactly, perfectly said. So how do you feel about social media and how do you manage it? I feel the same. Like I just said, it's our greatest tool and our greatest enemy. Uh, but for me personally, I have the assistance of Taylor from Jaded Directions. She helps me plan my grid, plan my months out of content. Um, so honestly, for me, I feel like as a brand starting up, having a creative director, having somebody helping you with your socials is pinnacle to being able to create without that anxiety on your mind like, and I got to post or damn, man, I got to come up with content or damn, man, I got I don't even know what to post. Right, so, when we have to do everything else for the brand. Right? Yeah. got to design. And yeah. everything. I got to make the clothes too, right. shit. So <laughs> it's just, it, it ends up being a lot, but shout out Taylor because she really is a saving grace in this whole shit. And if not for her, my social media would just be ass. Yeah, because it's such an essential tool for us. Like yeah, it, it's our, like, it, it, it could be the thing that slingshots us to the top. Right. It's also the thing that is very intentionally sabotaging us, keeping us wherever we're at by shadow banning us. The choice of songs that I have on my Instagram is like the bottom of the bottom barrel. Straight and up. And I'm just like, struggle. who wrote this shit? You know, but you know, it's because they really do everything in their power to make it hard for us. But the fact that we still break through, people still see our stuff, people are still wearing our clothes, buying our clothes, we have something there, you know? Right. We don't need 100,000 followers for 1,000 people to see our shit. We could have what we have and have a genuine 1,000 true followers. And that is what I believe is how you make a living as an artist. 1,000 true followers or fans that will buy everything you drop, that will come to every show or event, that will support everything that you, whatever, that will just be your fan. 1,000 of those, you're making a cush living off art. So a common denominator that I see within like people that are trying to chase something in the creative field yeah. is that it's hard for them to like stay motivated, especially when they're not like seeing direct results happen, yeah, right? And it's hard because- it's like working out. Yeah, it's, it's tough. You know, you have to sacrifice a lot. You have to be open to vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So how do you stay motivated as an artist, even when things may not be going your way? I think the vision, I think having a vision for what you want, because if you have a vision, no matter the circumstance of a good or a bad day, you know that everything is in pursuit of that vision. You have that goal in mind. You know that you want to get somewhere. Maybe that somewhere is perfection. Some, an idea that you could always strive for and always improve from, but never touch. Because nobody could ever be perfect. Nobody could ever create something perfect. However, imperfection is where perfection lies. And to always strive for perfection, you will always be working towards your greater self, towards your greater purpose, towards your brand's greater purpose or your art's greater purpose, all that. Just have a vision That's right. and the rest will do itself. The rest is history. So this is where my mind gets blown away. Like, not only are you a fashion designer, mm -hmm. right? You produce music Correct. and you're a DJ. Yes. And you're killing it all three, yeah. right? And so I was just curious, how 
did you learn how to do music, produce music, DJ, when I'd say, you know, in the average education that it's not normal to learn those types of skills. Yeah, for sure. It's honestly more difficult to find like conventional ed education that teaches you music production and DJing and the likes. Um, I honestly was really into Steve Aoki music wise back in like 2010. And I saved up to buy CDJ 400s and a DJM 400. It's my first set and literally just taught myself to DJ. I was throwing my own house parties. I was inviting friends. Um, sorry, mom. Uh, <laughs> literally just practicing that way, practicing by way of, you know, putting it into practice. Um, and I think that just through that, I felt the natural next step was to learn how to produce. So then two or three years in, I got Logic Pro and I just started to teach myself how to produce music. And a conversation I was having earlier is that the biggest part about music is that if it sounds good, it is good. And I've always held true to that. And it doesn't really matter how you get there per se, it does, but it doesn't really matter how you get there. What matters most is that you're making music that sounds good. It's yeah. enjoyable. That's the point of it. Yeah. So just started to teach myself, maintaining that philosophy in mind. And literally we are here in yeah. my music studio. So I have to get into this part. Okay. You just finished tour with Duckworth, opening up for Duckworth around the whole country. Correct. Right? How did you get that opportunity? Shout out my brother, Jordan Ward. Um, Jordan came to an awesome, awesome party. I believe it was the 4th of July at one of the local Valley spots, the Art Lab. Uh, shout out Jasmine and A-Friends. Um, but he came, he saw me DJ. He's like, damn, you really do this shit, huh? And I'm like, yep. And then he hit me up a couple months later and asked if I wanted to uh, DJ for him on tour, uh, opening for Duckworth on the Supergood tour. Uh, we were gonna go across the nation from LA to Boston and all cities in between. I uh, got to play at like Prince's house, got to go to Bowery Ballroom in New York. Uh, it was insane. As of today, what's been your biggest challenge with music and how'd you overcome it? Honestly, my biggest challenge with music is trying to get noticed. And I think I overcame it by pivoting to fashion. Um, I pivoted to fashion after 2020, after I decided to make a change in my situation. Um, and after that, I've found more success with music than I ever did over those 10 years. In these, these short three years of clothing, I've seen success in both music and clothing that I never saw in any of the years prior, trying so hard to get noticed all the time trying to throw myself out there, put myself out there in every single way possible. Videos, photos, events, everything. And just feeling like nobody noticed me. So when I said fuck that and I pivoted to clothing, everything changed. And that goes for the music too, everything changed for the better. So what's been the best advice that you've received from someone in your music career? Don't overthink shit. I think that's the greatest advice that's applicable not only in music, but to everything, I mean, everything in life. Don't overthink shit so you don't make mistakes that you know you would never have made if you didn't overthink shit. Don't overthink shit so that you destroy the thing that is beautiful, but you thought so hard about it that it's no longer beautiful. Just don't overthink shit. Best advice I've ever received. Shout out Kenny Beats. Mm -hmm.